Recording and streaming settings, bit rates, frame rates, they can be a little confusing, can't they? Well, we're going to make that super easy for you in today's video. I'm Vox. welcome back to my XSplit Masterclass, sponsored by XSplit. In previous episodes, we covered getting familiar with the overall UI and managing your audio and video devices in XSplit Broadcaster. Remember, if you missed all that, every episode of this course is linked in the playlist link in the description below. So make sure you check that playlist if you have any questions. I have probably already covered it. If you want to download XSplit for yourself and haven't already, be it Broadcaster or Gamecaster, check my affiliate link in the description below. It lets them know I sent you and encourages them to continue supporting free education and free tech education. I'm not saying this right ever again. Let's go. This XSplit Masterclass is also brought to you by Owned. Owned has lots of cool graphics. You want your stream to have that, wow, where'd you get that effect? Owned stream designs can do that for you. You got avatars, you got logos, you've got alerts, you've got stinger transitions, you've got layouts, you can preview them in real time. They're really cool and you can fully customize them and they're easy to use. Go to eposfox.gg slash own3d, link in the description, check them out and upgrade your stream today. Just a heads up, I will be covering some concepts in the streaming settings section that I won't repeat in the recording settings for the sake of time and not annoying people, but they will apply to both. Time codes will be in the description, but you may want to watch both to get a better understanding anyway. Let's start with your streaming settings. To set this up, click broadcast at the top and set up a new output. Then choose your desired streaming service from the list. If your desired streaming output is unavailable, you can click Find More Outputs to see if there's an option in the plugin store for it, as is the case for Periscope, Restream, and many other niche sources. If your desired location isn't available there either, then you'll need to set it up with the custom RTMP option and do it manually. For our example here, I'll be choosing Twitch, but the same principles apply to any platform, and I'll touch on a few specific, you know, per platform considerations that you'll need to keep in mind and as we go. Once you choose a platform, you'll need to authorize XSplit to use that streaming platform. Just click the link, link your stream account, and come back to the app. Click Next. For Twitch specifically, and a couple other streaming services, XSplit will automatically determine the best ingest server for you to use via bandwidth tests so that you don't have to decide. This step also gives you recommended resolutions based on your hardware specs and available upload speed so that you don't stream something that you just really can't handle. So this is pretty handy. Click finish. Now you're brought to the meat and potatoes of streaming settings. There is a lot. We're going to work through them so you don't have to get overwhelmed. Just take your time here. If you don't want to use an account authentication for any reason, you can click skip wizard back at the previous wizard. And then at this screen, you can choose stream key at the top of the settings menu. Then you copy your stream key over from your platform and use it that way instead of logging in. Again, ingest server was set to automatic. You can test this again, choose to manually have to confirm the server of choice each time before you stream, or manually select a server from the drop-down menu. Generally, you want to choose a server near you, in green, with the lowest latency. Next, it's time to choose your video encoder. With XSplit, I'm generally going to recommend that NVIDIA users use the NVENC encoder instead of X264. I'll explain performance reasons in a moment, but generally speaking, especially for those on NVIDIA's newer GPUs, such as the 1650 Super or higher tier, or the RTX 2060 or newer, NVIDIA's NVENC encoder can now match X264 in quality, while adding virtually no performance penalty to your game, nor dropping frames on stream. It's kind of the perfect solution here. AMD users, on the other hand, should experiment and see which encoder performs best to their liking. AMD's GPU encoder, VCE, or AMF, has not been around as long as NVIDIA's and has some serious quality issues at the moment. It still performs very well in most cases, but the quality it achieves usually doesn't keep up with NVIDIA or software X264. I have a plethora of videos cover covering AMD VCE and AMD NVENC and how they differ and what you should choose for which purpose. I have a playlist of those linked in the video description. Let's talk performance though. As a quick summary, GPU encoding will always perform better, both for your stream and for your game, than CPU encoding on modern hardware. This is because modern graphics cards have a dedicated silicon, basically a dedicated chip, or rather part of the main chip, that is dedicated to video encoding. It's an ASIC, if you're familiar with what that is. It's more or less a standalone video encoding processor sitting there waiting for you to use it, sitting there waiting to encode video. It doesn't affect your game performance, and it can usually encode your stream without any dropped frames or lag. This is great, 
but that accelerated speed has historically come at a trade-off of quality cost. As mentioned, this is more or less a non-issue on modern NVIDIA hardware, but it is still a problem for AMD graphics cards. On the other side is CPU encoding. Your processor is required to do, well, everything on your computer. Running your Spotify or Discord in the background, routing your recordings to your hard drives, processing a lot of the load for the game that you're playing, and running the setup for XSplit as well. So you're only left with so much headroom to add video encoding by X264 on top of all of that. In some cases, some games will require too much resources for X264 to even be viable for some users. Plenty of older PCs will not have a good time encoding with X264 simply due to not having enough power or too few threads, things like that. And in virtually every case, other than the top tier, top end hardware, encoding with X264 will result in a drop in performance for the game that you're playing. This will result in lower frame rates and potentially added input lag or hitching or stuttering on screen, which will be both a bad time for your viewers and for you trying to play a game. Obviously, the impact of this scales with the level of hardware that you have. If you have some awesome Threadripper or X299 Intel chips like I do, X264 won't be a problem, but if performance is a serious problem for you, I wouldn't recommend using X264. So TLDW, for most people, choose the GPU encoder option. All this being said, Unlike with Gamecaster, Broadcaster does give you the option of changing your X264 CPU usage preset by clicking the gear icon next to the settings. Ultra fast is the default, which is very low quality, but it performs really well. If you're on a high-end CPU, you can lower this. Slower preset equals better quality. You can lower this down as far as fast or medium, depending on your CPU and target resolution. This will increase your quality greatly, but require a lot more CPU power to drive. On something like my main Threadripper workstation, I can drop it down to medium and slow, and it won't even blink. But most systems will not be able to do this. For more details on which CPUs can handle which X264 CPU usage presets, check my stream guides playlist linked in the video description. So TLDW, for most people, choose the GPU encoder option. Next up, it's time to talk about the scary subject of bitrate. People always get real confused when this subject comes up, but I'm going to make it very simple for you, or at least I hope. Your bitrate should not exceed 75 to 80% of the total available upload bandwidth for your internet connection. This includes both audio and video, even though this box is only for just video bitrate in this section. So just subtract 160 kilobits per second for audio for whatever number you come up with. Start by running a speed test on a site like openspeedtest.com or speedtest.net and see what your upload speed is. Usually this is measured in megabits per second. Remember that one megabit is 1000 or 1024 kilobits per second. The actual bitrate box is measured in kilobits. So take 75% of your upload speed that the speed test gives you and not your download speed, your upload speed. And that's the highest bitrate that you should be streaming at. So for a 10 megabit upload speed, the highest you should set it to is around 7.5 megabits per second or 7500 kilobits per second in the box, for example. That being said, also keep your streaming service in mind. YouTube lets you send basically any speed you want to them, up to like 100 megabits per second, which is pretty crazy. But Twitch has a maximum officially supported bitrate of 6 megabits per second. Mixers is 10 megabits per second. So you don't want to exceed those numbers on your given streaming platform, even if your internet speed is capable of it. The reason we choose bitrate this way is because your internet connection generally is not designed to sustain its max speed constantly and trying to do so may result in dropouts or disconnects or buffering issues for your viewers. Plus, you need to leave headroom for your network for other devices or programs to potentially start using your internet connection unexpectedly. If you're using the X264 encoder, you can click the little gear icon to enable the experimental adaptive CBR, which will allow the bitrate to dynamically adjust to keep your stream alive should something happen and cause your available upload bandwidth for your stream to be limited. While quality will suffer as a result of this, that's usually far preferable to just having your stream kicked offline entirely. So choose rock or a hard place, I guess. Next up is audio bitrate. For streaming, don't touch the codec, but if you have the available upload speed, you can kick the bitrate up to 160 kilobits per second, but that's usually the max supported bitrate for streaming services. Below this, you have a box to automatically save recording to local drive. And should you enable it, you can create a multi-track recording, which will separate out your microphone and your system sound to make mixing and post or cutting out music during an edit later a lot easier. This is a great option, as it means you can just immediately record an exact copy 
of your stream every time you stream without issues. This is probably the best recording option for most streamers, ensuring that you have a local copy of the VOD for archiving or editing later. The next option is to add a stream delay. If you want there to be a more significant delay between what's happening in real time on your screen and what the viewers see on their screen, you can use this. This would be most helpful to prevent the concept of stream sniping, where competitive players watch the stream to try to find and beat the streamer in a game like a battle royale title like PUBG or Fortnite. Otherwise, most streamers typically want there to be as little display delay as possible, so you can just turn this off. If at any time you don't want to manually configure these settings anymore, or you have royally messed things up, you can click Setup Wizard at the bottom to start back at square one. Are you ready to take ultimate control over your live stream but you're not sure how? The Elgato Stream Deck is the key to unlocking your full potential. With your choice of 6, 15, or 32 keys, all with customizable screens behind them, and unlimited possibilities to nest, make folders, and pages to control your live stream with scene switching, muting your microphone, activating your Elgato key lights, and setting up multi-actions to do everything at once. Start your stream, turn on your lights, tweet your stream, you can do anything. You'd be a fool not to have this in your setup. You don't want to be a fool, do you? Check it out via the link below and tell them the stream professor sent you. For those looking to use XSplit Broadcaster to record videos instead of stream, let's tackle this next. I will say, if you're just tuning into this part from the time code, what most of what I said about streaming applies and I don't want to just repeat myself, also, the streaming settings already have an option to record an exact VOD of your stream there, so that may be all that you need. If you're wanting to record in a higher quality than you're streaming in, there's some considerations to keep in mind as well, which we'll be covering here. To access recording settings, click the record menu at the top of the screen and click the gear icon next to local recording. The very first time you ever click local recording, it will pop up this menu, but it's safer to click the gear icon if you don't want to just accidentally start a recording. Here we have similar settings as we did for streaming, encoder choice, audio bitrate, etc. If you're recording, Split doesn't make you fumble with video bitrates or anything like that, however. It saves you the hassle. You simply choose between quality levels, standard, high, very high, ultra high quality modes. Each of these require you know, more bitrate than the last, and in some cases more processing power to record as well. The default standard is fine for those who just aren't nitpicky and just want you know, quick clips for social media needs. Ultra is only for those obsessed with absurd quality up levels and upscaling to 4K, things like that. Keep in mind that this is recording locally, so your internet speed is not a factor in what you choose here. However, if you are recording on a laptop or a computer with an older spinning hard drive, there is always the possibility that your recording drive won't be able to keep up with the higher quality modes unless you're on an SSD. Also keep in mind the higher quality mode, the bigger your final file size will be. So if file sizes are a concern for you, you don't want to just jump in on Ultra. Next, you have an option to enable multi-track audio recording. Again, this separates your microphone sound and your system sound so that you can mix them and edit them later on in editing. If you're not worried about doing this, turn this off as it will make your life easier. If you do want the capability, check it. Just keep in mind, if you upload your recordings directly to a site like YouTube or other social media sites, they will only contain one of the two audio tracks, most likely just your game sound, so all of your microphone sound will just be not there, unless you edit it and mix them back together. For whatever bizarre reason, recording audio bit right here defaults to a terrible, terrible 96 kilobits per second. Please, of all things, make sure you change this. Kick this as high as it will go, which is currently 192 kilobits per second. You will thank me later. Next, you can choose between FLV or MP4 file type. FLV is much less likely to corrupt if something weird happens during your stream and XSplit crashes or you lose system power or something like that, but it doesn't support multiple audio tracks and isn't compatible with many video editors these days. MP4 does support those and is most compatible, but it is prone to corruption when something goes wrong. There's an option for recordings here, split recordings. When this enables, it allows you to set a file size at which Broadcaster will make a new file every time it reaches this file size. This only really has two uses that I foresee. If you plan on copying your recordings over to, you know, weird older drives, such as ones formatted as FAT32, they can't hold files bigger than four gigabytes. So you need to do this. Or if you're recording very, very lengthy recordings to the extent that you may fill your target recording drive and you want to reduce the possibility that you lose footage due to corruption, 
as you fill that drive, then you can set it to split files every so often so that even if you do fill your drive and that last file corrupts, you're only losing, you know, X minutes of your stream versus the entire stream. A checkbox is checked for forced constant frame rate. For most people, I'm going to say to leave this on. This forces the recording to stay at a locked 30 or 60 frames per second or whatever frame rate you choose. In general, this is what you want. There are some scenarios where performance can be smoothed out by unchecking it. And basically, this is basically what your phone's camera video does. It records at a file that's an oddball frame rate, which is just variable over time so that any dropped or skipped frames are just kind of ignored and the video stays, you know, it still appears smooth. If you're only recording to upload directly to YouTube or you're using Vegas Pro as your video editor, unchecking this is fine. But many other video editors really struggle with VFR videos and it will cause audio to become way desynced and things like that. So I just recommend leaving this checked to be safe. Okay, lastly with recording settings, there is a box to optimize for YouTube. This changes the recording settings to match those on YouTube as best as they can based on their recommendations list. However, I consider YouTube's recommended, recommended bit rates, especially for 1080p and lower, to completely be useless and borderline harmful. So I'm going to personally tell you to leave this unchecked. The recommended bit rates do not produce high quality videos once they get uploaded and recompressed. That's it for the recording settings overview. You may have gotten through this and be wondering, wait, how, do, how the heck do I change resolution and frame rates then? I actually showed that back in the UI walkthrough episode. So it's not in these streaming or recording settings. In the main broadcaster window at the top right menu, at the top right is the menu to change your resolution and frame rate options. Click the drop down menu. Here you can change the preview from just the live preview to a split view showcasing what's actually live on the right and another scene onto the left so you can tinker with it before, you know, before you send it live or whatever. Plus you can change your resolutions and frame rates to your heart's content. If you're wanting to record in a different resolution than you're streaming in, for example, recording in 1080p or 1440p, but streaming in 720p, set XSplit to that higher resolution in this menu, then edit your stream settings, click the gear icon below the encoder, and change the video size to that lower resolution that you want to stream at. You can actually choose to stream a different frame rate as well, but I really wouldn't recommend that. That could cause some weird problems. Now, the thing with recording settings is that it's a different recording than the automatically saved recording to local drive option in the stream settings. That stream option records an exact copy of your stream that you beam up to the web locally. It doesn't require a second encoder process. It just, you know, whatever you're sending up also gets sent to your hard drive. Recording uses a second encoder process. Uh, you know, the formal recording settings uses a second encoder process, which achieves a different quality, but it also takes more resources. Remember how I described the balance of CPU power between your game and background processes and, and encoding? Should you use X264? Well, recording while streaming requires adding even more load to that balance to, you know, stream and record and do everything else. I highly, highly recommend going with your graphics card's encoder instead of X264. Not only is performance not a concern, since GPU encoder will mostly perform flawlessly in all scenarios, depending on which quality mode you leave it on, Plus, you get up to two encode sessions on NVIDIA and no limit on AMD anyway, but quality is also fine. You'll be able to achieve a higher quality encoding on the GPU than CPU when you're recording this way. Now, this may sound contradictory to what I said before, where I said, at least on AMD's side, that CPU encoding would be of higher quality than what you can get on the GPU encoding. But that only applies to very, very low bit rates, where you're trying to squeeze out the best possible quality for a low bit rate live stream. For a high bitrate recording, however, those quality differences completely normalize out and GPU encoding become, comes out on top due to the performance reason alone. So just don't use your CPU for both recording and streaming. There, there, there is no point. Use that GPU encoder. That's what it's there for. If you're looking for a balance, a typical workflow is to stream on the CPU and record on the GPU, but depending on your hardware, using the GPU for both may be a better option. Remember, a big rule of stream settings is to test, test, and test again. So I would recommend starting you at very high or ultra quality and then working your way down should performance be a problem during your, during your recording. And that's it. For basic streaming or recording, you are now set up and equipped to get streaming with XSplit Broadcaster. Get out there, make some fun streams. Once you've established yourself, submit yourself to my stream critique series and have some fun. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe for more tech education. Be sure to check out the full course playlist link in the description down below, as well as links to our sponsors. 
Thanks for watching this episode of my masterclass. I'm Meeples Vox. I'll see you next time.